Welcome everyone. In this week lecture, we are going to understand the basic syntax of Verilog. Uh, for Verilog, we are going to follow this Palnitkar book, uh, the second edition of the book. It's uh, and most of the examples for this uh, week uh, Verilog instructions uh, will be examples to be taken from this book only. So, uh, if you now think about a hardware design, you have to design the entire system, right. So, you cannot just have a flat designs, right. So, the basic concept is like you develop the design hierarchically, right. Uh, what does it mean? It mean you have the entire module, you know what is your overall designs, you break into sub modules, right. And each sub module has a specific definition. So, this part will do this part, this part will do this, this particular operations and so on. And if it's very, the design is very big, then in some case what you have to do? The sub module has to break into again another sub module inside and so on, right. So, this is what is the call, call the concept of hierarchical designs. And if you see any practical designs, digital design, that is always hierarchical, right. So, if you take the example of a ripple curry adder, right. So, we will introduce the concept of ripple curry adder in this course latter part, but let us try to understand. So, if you see a ripple curry adder, it consists of uh, say it is a 4 bit ripple curry adder. So, it consists of 4 T flip flop connected like this. So, once you try to develop this ripple curry adder, uh, what will you do? You basically you will define your top level module is the ripple curry adder and hierarchically it is there are 4 T flip flop they are connected like in a chain like this, right. So, then this is what is the first level of hierarchy. So, there are 4 modules of T flip flop are there in my overall design. Now, if you uh, look into what is T flip flop, it is basically uh, consists of a D flip flop and there is a not get. So, it is basically there is input Q. So, the output is Q and that actually going to as the output and that is get negated and that go to the input for as the next input every clock and there is a reset input and there is a clock input. So, this is now my T flip flop modules, right. So, and now if you think about hierarchically a T flip flop module consists of a D flip flop and a not get, right. So, if you think about now the hierarchical design looks like this, you want to develop a ripple curry adder. So, you break this ripple curry adder into 4 T, T flip flops and each T flip flops consists of kind of uh, one D flip flop and a not get, right. So, this is what is the hierarchical uh, way of uh, thinking or uh, designing a digital circuit, right. So, the design can be Im implemented both top down or bottom up approach, right. So, you can uh, first def develop this uh, D flip flop not gets and then you combine them to get the T flip flop and then combine the T flip flop to get the ripple curry adder that is what is called bottom up approach, right. And on the top down, bottom up you think about I have to design this and you think that uh, to de develop a ripple curry adder what are the things I need. Then you understand that uh, I need T flip flops and then you and how they will be connected, right. So, that is your and then you decide that for a ripple curry I need 4 uh, T, uh, T flip flops and they will be connected like this and then you decide uh, how to implement the T flip flop and you know that to implement a T flip flop you uh, can use a D flip flop and not get, right. So, this is what is called top down. In reality, you have in for a complex design uh, both bottom up and top down get both being used um, in for practical designs, okay. So, this is how you have to realize your uh, design. So, what term that I am using uh, very often in so far in the last 5 minutes is the modules, right. So, the basic component of a hardware design is the modules. So, in this case, this T flip flop is also module, D flip flop is a module, and so on, right. So, then we have to know what is module, right. So, in in hardware the basic component is the module. So, module is defined like this. So, it has uh, uh, the format is like this. So, it has uh, the module name. So, you have to first you have to use that keyword module and then you have to give the module name. This is the name of the module and based on your application you decide the module name and then these are the input output list, right. So, there is no specific order, but uh, you can use uh, one of the format either you can keep the outputs at the start or input uh, followed by the inputs or uh, uh, input first and then output, right. Then this is the declaration part, this is the declaration part. 
So, in this part you have to declare this variables the arguments of this module. So, you say that this uh, this select 0, select 1 input uh, in 0, in 1, in 2, in 3 these are all inputs I am going to talk about that more and then out is the output right. So, now I have defined all of this uh, uh, parameters ok and internally I need probably need certain registers wires uh, I am going to explain them in more. Uh, you have to declare all of them what are the things you need in your module and then this is the module body where you define what exactly the purpose of this module ok. And then finally, you have to have a n module things. So, this basically the basic structure of a module right you remember here there is a semicolon ok. Uh, so, this is the module definitions and uh, so in general so the, it has the uh, keyword module then you have to give the module name and the port list what are the input and output port and then you declare all the input output uh, in out ports and the internal wire and registers I am going to talk about them more detail and then the statements that define the purpose of the module and then it is uh, end by a n module ok. So, now uh, as I mentioned that uh, the most important uh, thing for a module is the interface right how this module will be interconnected. So, how this module in interact with the outside world and that is defined by the ports ok. So, uh, uh, so in a uh, in a module there are uh, input port, output port or in out port. So, there are three kind of port can have right. So, uh, most of the time we use input and output uh, it means that say suppose this is your uh, repeal carry adder block and these are the input is coming right. So, this is your input and these are the outputs. So, then you will declare say suppose this A, B, C is coming here. So, you will say A, B, C is the input to this uh, block modules right this is my module and this say suppose this is X and Y is the output. So, we will declare this input is A, B and C output is X and Y. So, by default if you do not specify the width this all uh, input and output is single bit right. But, uh, mm, but there is a way to declare multi bit that I will cover uh, later part of this course. And there are some in out port which is bidirectional in the sense this from the same port you can give some input also you can read out uh, the out right. So, if such kind of uh, port you need you have to use the in out, but most of the time people use in and input and output port ok. So, by default this imp, uh, these ports are wire right. So, they are not storing the value they do not hold the value ok. So, uh, so if you write input wire in 1 it is same as input n 1 because wire is default right. So, you do not need to specify wire explicitly. Similarly, if you write output wire out 1 it is same to as output out 1 ok. So, if I come back to my T flip flop uh, example. So, if I define the module uh, module is uh, T flip flop. So, I declare like module I give the name t flip flop t underscore flip flop and what are the inputs I have clock reset and q is the output right. So, this q is the output. So, I declare so I put them is the argument list q clock and reset. So, I specify that output is q and input is clock and reset ok and internally this is my wire d. So, I have to declare wire d right. So, this is your my d wire because you have to define this this is q right. So, and then how do I uh, now I have to make the connections. So, the connection is like this I have to instantiate a D flip flop. So, I say suppose I already have a definition of D flip flop somewhere. So, I have declared this is my instances on D flip flop and how the connection. So, it has reset clock D right. So, it has an output is Q. So, then Q is the output D clock and reset is the input. So, it the definition is already there and the order should be same. So, that means, the d underscore flip flop ff in that module uh, the order of the parameter will be exactly this you cannot change this orders ok. And then you uh, say there is a not gate. So, you instantiate a not gate and you give the name of the not gate is n 1 right and you give the name is of this is as d f f 0 and how it is connected. So, input is q output is d right. So, so output is d and input is q. So, for all this module that is inbuilt in a Verilog language like and or not 
So, they are usually we keep the output first and then input and then the list of input letter. Okay. Uh, so, this is how you make the connection. So, if you see here, so if you just make this way, it is actually make this connections, right. So, the name make this connection automatically. So, you are saying that not get input is Q and output is D. So, it is basically make this connections. And here in the deep flip flop, you are saying that this Q is the output. So, you are basically defining this is the output, you are connecting these uh, things to this Q, and then you are saying this D clock and reset is the input, right. So, this is how you are going to define this deep flip flop. Right. Now, one important thing here is that this uh, once you declare this module, it is just the definition of this module, right. But in a hardware, I have to place this module that is called instantiation, right. So, I have to just like uh, in C, if you declare a function, does not mean it is getting used, right. Whenever you call the function, that means that mean that time that function is going to use. In the hardware itself, if you, you might declare a module. But to use that module in your design, you have to instantiate that module. Okay. So, uh, if I use this my ripple carry adder, so in the ripple carry adder, as I mentioned, there are four T flip flops, right. So, now if I try to define the module of this ripple carry adder, so I declare the module and then I give the name of the module is ripple carry adder and its input is Q, okay, and clock and reset where this is important, I will explain more detail. So, it, it says that Q is 4 bit, okay. So, it is 0 to 3 means Q 0, Q 1, Q 2 and Q 3, there are 4 bits, okay. And this clock and reset is single bit. And now, this is interesting. So, I am instantiating 4, so I already have this T flip flop definition. So, this is my T underscore FF is the uh, module name for the T flip flop and I am creating 4 I am instantiating four time of this T flip flop, and the name of this uh, instance is TFF zero, TFF one, TFF two, and TFF three. So this is TFF zero, TFF one, TFF two, and TFF three. So this is it's not all about this, right? So this is basically uh, exactly say how uh, what is the ripple carry adder, and here is the instantiation, right? This is called instantiation. of T flip flops, but it is not I am only instantiating, I am also making the interconnections. How? You see here uh, for this T flip flop, what was the input sequence I mentioned? So, it is Q, clock and reset. So, what I am doing here? So, if you see in the first key T flip flop, its input is, uh, so I am connecting the clock and reset and Q 0 is my output, right. So, in the T flip flop, if you remember this Q is the output and these are the inputs. Right. This is my input. So, what I am doing here, I am making the connection like this. So, Q0 is my output. So, I am just saying that this is my Q0, right. It is basically Q0, right. And I am also making the connection clock and reset here. So, I am making clock to the second port, so the first input port, and reset to the second input port, okay. So, I can th visualize my T flop flop is like this, right. So, it has clock, then reset and output is Q, right. This is my input and this is our, this is T flip flop. Interestingly, in the next one TFF1, what I am doing, I am saying that Q1 is the output. So, I have defined my output 4 bit, I am defi defining each bit of it. I am saying the first uh, bit of the output will come from TFF0. I am saying that second bit of the output Q will come from TFF1 and I am also making that the Q0, whatever the output here, that will be connected to the clock. So, I am instead of clock, I am writing here Q0. So, effectively, I am make connecting this clock, uh, this Q to the clock port of this next T flip flop. So, it will make exactly this interconnections, right, and reset is common to all this. And this Q1 will make my next output. Similarly, for the TFF2, the output of the second T flip flop, I am connecting. So, this is important, right, I am connecting to the clock port of this and reset is same and similarly I am connecting Q2 to the clock port of this. So, if I, so from this convention, I am not only instantiating the modules, I am also interconnecting them, right. So, this is how I am going to develop this T, the ripple click, uh, ripple carry adder using the four instance of the T flip flop and their interconnection exactly defined the way I instantiated them.
right. So, during instantiation I it is myself make the connections proper ok. So, this is what is called instantiation and now if you want to use this ripple carry adder in any bigger designs I have to instantiate this ripple carry adder module uh, in that design right. This is how the things work ok. So, this is the basic concept that in a Verilog we have modules, but I have used so many things right this uh, uh, this uh, wire register uh, with vector all those things. So, those I am going to define now ok. So, uh, first thing first that in Verilog there are 4 values we usually consider 0 is uh, the logical 0, 1 is the logical 1, x is unknown value right where the value I do not uh, the interconnections if you make uh, wrong interconnection sometime uh, the value is not known ok and z is the high impedance value or the floating value when say there are multiple inputs coming to the same source I mean uh, same destination then uh, this kind of situation come. So, usually these are the undesired values uh, and whenever you are getting this that means you may make some mistakes in the interconnections right probably probably you make some inter mistake in this interconnections and because of that you are getting that. So, usually uh, the 0 and 1 is the desirable values ok. So, in Verilog uh, the basic syntax like uh, you can have the comments uh, where you can just use just like C you can just use this and you can write the comment this is a single line comment and if you have multiple uh, line comment you can just write all this comment and you give this right. So, just like C you can use unary operator, binary operator, ternary operator. So, all the kind of unary operator is negation binary operator is like and or not boolean, op boolean operations similarly arithmetic operation like plus minus those things are also there and ternary operator like this right. So, where you con uh, model if else right. So, you are saying B if it is true then you uh, you assign C to A if B is not true then you assign D to A right this is the ternary operator. So, these are uh, exactly same as the C syntax right in detail you can go into the books. You can uh, specify a constant number and the format is like this you first specify what is the size of the number then what is the base followed by a dash here and then you say what is the base, base can be binary, decimal, hexadecimal or octal and then what is the number right. Some examples say suppose you want to define a 4 bit uh, binary number where the value is 1 1 1 right. So, here it says there is a 4 bit number then dash and then say this is a b is boolean or the binary and the value is 1 1 1 it is basically 15 in decimal right. If you write 12 this it means it is a hexadecimal number and in hexadecimal the values can be 0 to 9 plus a b c d e f right. So, then you can have this uh, value can be anything you can write here a b c means it is basically 10 this is 11 and this is 12 right in hexadecimal and uh, each bit is 4 bit. Right in hexadecimal, each each particular uh, number, uh, each bit basically represent as using four bit boolean binary number. So that's why this is four plus four plus four. This is twelve bit. Right. So this is twelve bit hexadecimal number. Similarly, if you write this, it's basically a decimal number which is sixteen bit, and the value is two fifty five. So in, instead of this B H and D, you can use both D or capital D. Both are allowed. Right. So you can use H or capital H, B or uh, small b or there is a octal number which is 3 bit again you can use small o or big o ok. Uh, so, if you do not specify the uh, base format by default it is decimal ok. So, these are some corner cases. So, if you do not uh, specifically specify the decimal. So, if you just specify this this will be considered as a, a decimal number ok. And if you do not specify the size by default the maximum size will be considered usually it is 32 bit. So, here in this case I do not specify the base or that base is a decimal number or hexadecimal number. So, this is a valid hexadecimal number as well it is a valid octal number as well because the numbers are less than 8 uh, less than 7 right. But since I have not specified the base here it will be considered as a decimal number and since I have not specified this uh, the size of this it will be considered as 32 bit number ok. So, in this case I have not specified the size, but I have specified this uh, base. So, this although this is only a 8 bit hexadecimal, but it will be considered as 32 bit number if I assume that the default size is 32 bit because here I do not specify the size. And this is a octal number again the size is not specified. So, although this is only 
six bit, but it will be considered as a 32 bit number because I do not specify the size. Okay. Uh, negative number also can be represented, which is basically just you put a negation at the minus sign at the start of this number, right? It's this is not a valid format. So it basically say it's a six bit decimal number, and the value is minus three, right? If you be specify the sign here, so it is minus three. So internally it will store the two's complement of three in six bit format, okay? But this is not a valid one because here uh, this minus two is not uh, the one. So you should write minus four d two. It is basically you are saying that it's a four bit decimal number. Value is minus two. Internally it will store the two's complement of minus two. Okay. So as I mentioned, when you have this very log uh, module, so you the best finally you know designs. Uh, you have many modules and uh, to make this connections among the modules you need the net or wire okay so or wire so you have to make the interconnections so for making interconnections you need wires to store the data just like in c you declare variables right so wire cannot store the value it is a continuous assignment right whenever that input changes it will uh, the value of the wire will change okay uh, but if you want to store the values, you need registers. It just hold the value, right? And when you need a many registers or array of register, it's called kind of memories, right? So it's an array of data storage. So I'll just quickly uh, explain them. So net, as I mentioned, so suppose this is your mo one module or this is another module, and you want to make the so these are the port list, right? There are four port list, and you want to make a connection from this to this, right? So you need OR here. So these are the OR. Similarly, you might uh, this has to be connected to somewhere, this has to be connected somewhere. So, to make this interconnections, I am going to use wire. Okay. The declare keyword is wire. And it is basically when you define a wire, uh, since it cannot store a value, it must have been connected to some source, right. So, otherwise, it is basically uh, or which is called driver. If you do not connect, it will, it will give you some error, right, that this net is hanging, there is no source connected to this. Okay. So, this must have a driver to the net and uh, this wire can uh, as, as I mentioned it can hold 0, 1, x and z the desirable value is 0 and 1 by default it is z high impedance. Okay. So, it should not if there is a hanging net then it will show z value when you simulate the design. Okay. So, whenever you declare a net the first thing first you must connect it to, the, uh, to some uh, source right? so that it is drive by that source okay? and the output will be connected to some places. Registers as I show that it is basically retain the value over the clock. In a hardware design it is basically driven by clocks. right? So, uh, if you want to hold a value over the clocks you are going to use register and the keyword is reg. Okay? And register may not need any driver. So, by default you can initialize a register, you can initialize a register value with some 0 or 1 whatever you want and it will hold that value unless you change it. Okay? Uh, so, again it can hold any 4 values, but desirable value is 0 and 1 and this reg is not same as flip flop. So, this will be discussed uh, at the when we introduce flip flop and we will discuss further. Okay. As I mentioned vectors is basically uh, multiple bits in hardware. right? So, if you just declare a OR A, it is a single line, it is a single bit, but whenever I declare OR 0 to 7 bus, it is basically 7 bit bus, it is basically there are 7 right. So, it is basically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and it is 8 right. So, this is 0 to 7 means 8 bit bus. Okay. So, that means there are 8 uh, parallel wire right you are declaring them as this and this is very much needed. So, whenever because your design may not uh, say suppose you want to add 2 numbers of 32 bit number. So, you cannot just uh, declare A uh, say input A and input B, then it will be single bit. Instead what I am going to do, I am going to do this input the 310 A B. So, it will say that your input is th 32 bit number 0 to 31 and your output is basically th uh, 33 bits because when you add to 32 bit number result will be 33 bits right. So, you can say this is the sum. 
so whenever you want to do use multiple bits so you are going to use this and this can be uh, uh, declared both with reg and net right so uh, both reg and net can be multiple bits S simply here like if you put uh, reg clock it's a single bit clock but if you put reg 0 to 40 it's a 41 bits uh, value right and the value name is uh, so virtual address is 41 bits right so it's basically 14 uh, one bit width now uh, if you notice here here i have written 0 to 31 and here is 0 to 40 in very log both are allowed okay the only difference is that the whatever you write this side this is the msb okay so if you write 0 to 7 then this is your uh, lsb least significant bit and this is the most significant bit so although if you uh, and if you write this 0 to 40 then what will happen your 0 is the msb okay this is a 0 right this is uh, and and this is 40 which is lsb so this is lsb and this is msb so both are fine but when you, if you suppose you want to use um, the say lsb bit so you have to use the 40th bit right not the 0th bit by default it is not 0 it depends on how do you declare this so in this case your 0 is the this is the convention right we usually when you declare a array in c also 0 is the lsb and kind of uh, say n or the 100 is the msb uh, so if you write 0 to 31 that is followed so you you have to be very careful about which particular line you want to access uh, in your uh, in your design in this case uh, and this MSP and LSP knowledge is important, but both are allowed in uh, Verilog as I mentioned, it both are allowed, but this is the MSP and this is the LSP. Okay? And also since you can declare a multi bit value uh, in hardware, you can also select part of it and that is what I am talking about this LSP and MSP is important. So if you, uh, if you declare here is a bus, right? so bus is bus A which is a 32 bit wire. And if you just specify that bus A7, it is basically the 8th bit from LSB. So you have you declare OR 310 bus bus, right? Okay. Uh, so now if you uh, access, so basically that means your uh, bits are 0, 1, 2, 2, 31, right? There are 32 bit number. And if you want to access 7, so it is basically this bit, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? And, and this way there are till 31. So this is your 7th bit from LSB. And if you declare uh, OR, let me declare OR 8 bit, or say I just declare in other way now, uh, 0, 9 bit OR bus. And you see here I am given this is energy. So it is now 8, 7, uh, 6, 4, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, right? So this is my MSB, this is LSB. So now if you ac access bus 3, it is this bit, it is not the third bit from this side, it is this bit, right? So effectively it is the, uh, if you consider this way this is the uh, 1 2 3 4 5 sixth bit right but uh, it will exactly access this one whether it's msb or lsb okay so there are other example uh, similar way you can also select a part of it right so it's saying the 0 to 2 so your bus is say uh, 32 bit or you are now accessing only the th 3 bits of it so you can access uh, some bus 3 to 1 also any part of the bus you can access okay so all are allowed. So now memories is basically I have declared a multiple bit, uh, multiple uh, width, uh, right? Now if you want to array of such register that is called memory, just like array in your C. So uh, and the syntax is like reg, then this is the word size. So that is already we have declared, and then you say the memory name, register name, and this is the array. Okay, this is the array size. So if you declare this reg and you have not specify anything so it's a single bit right so if you just declare like reg mem right so it is basically one bit reg and then you are specifying the array size so
So, what does this mean? It is basically uh, so suppose if you declare reg say x 0 to 31, it basically means uh, it is a single bit because the reg is single bit. So, you have single bit right single bit and there are 32 address right. So, this is the array right this is your x and if you declare reg say uh, 0 to 31 it is a and then say y 0 to 31. So, what does it mean? You have each location is 3 bits right. So, you have basically 3 bits right which is y 0 and this we have 32 right. So, you can just think about So, every location has 3 bits, every location has 3 bits and there are 32 such location right. This is y 0, this is y 1 and this is y 31 right. And so, this is here it is there are 32 locations, but each location is single bit right. So, this is the convention. So, uh, this is exactly this. So, this is a k, this is a memory there are 1001 k bit, there are 1024 locations and each location has 8 bit ok. So, this is how I will declare my memories ok. There is one more thing is parameter which is just uh, define some constant value. So, for example, I want to use a specific value I, I want to parameterize my code like that I can use this code for 8 bit as well as uh, 16 bit just changing one location right. So, what I can do that the syntax is like parameter then you give the name and the constant value. So, for example, in parameter I say the byte size is 8 bit. Now, I can use this byte size to define this right. So, I can use a I can declare a register of byte size minus 1 those many bits and the name of the register is A. Now, if I change the byte size to 10 now this register will become uh, 10 bits right. So, 0 to 9 means 10 bits. If I change this to 100 this uh, register will become 100 bits. Okay. So, this is basically uh, if I want to uh, parameterize a particular value and I am going to use this byte size many places. So, instead of everywhere writing 8 I will just define this constant as byte size and I am going to use it across my code. Okay. This is uh, also available. Uh, few more examples uh, as I mentioned uh, this wire is a single bit wire this is 8 bit uh, wire right this is 32 bits wire bus A is a 32 bit bus B is also 32 bit bus C is 36 and this is a single bit register this is 32 bit register B memory I will say that this is a uh, 4 bit memory memory A there are 64 such locations right 64 4 bit registers right I can uh, access by address right. So, I can this address can be 0 to 63 okay. And uh, and then I can uh, declare this reg mem b, which is zero to four. This means this is a single bit register because there is no we mention here, but there are five locations. So there is five one bit registers, and the number format as I mentioned, you specify the uh, size of the number, then you give a dash, then the base and the number. So here, if you do not specify the size, it will be maximum size. And if you do not specify the base, it will be always decimal. And uh, if you specify the size, this is a decimal number, uh, 16 bit, and value is 255. Okay. Uh, so in this lecture, I cover primarily the basic syntax uh, of Verilog. In next class, I'm going to discuss how I can develop a design hierarchically with Verilog. Thank you. Mm -hmm.